The taps at Broadhead Brewery are flowing now. But before the bar, before the big workspace, this was Broadhead, a home brewing operation in Josh LaRock's basement. Being an engineer, I had uh, aspirations to build a lot of cool equipment, so we just sort of got deeper into the process and uh, learned more and more about making the beer at the same time. Now, just a year after moving into their current location, Broadhead is churning out six distinct beers to 42 bars and restaurants. The lineup? Dark Horse Stout, Underdog Ale, Grindstone Amber, Wildcard Ale, Longshot White, and Old Faithful Backbone Standard Ale. LaRock's business partner, Jamie White, says making six beers is a no-brainer. You know, I don't want to say that it sells itself, um, but um, we have a pretty darn good lineup, and I, we pride ourselves in having at least one beer that somebody likes um, from across our, our normal sixth. The beer has been such a hit that a problem is now brewing for LaRock and his team. The demand is so high right now that it's a challenge to actually keep up. So we have less of a focus on where we're going and more on where we're at right now and making sure that we keep everyone happy. One of the people adding to Broadhead's overflowing demand is Simeon Yeremko, the owner of the Rochester pub. But he thinks that with all the microbreweries popping up in Ottawa, the supply will soon overtake the demand. Purely the number of them that are starting up is going to cause them problems, just because there's only so many taps available. I got them 10 taps. I could take half my guys off right now and put on somebody else. When comparing the cost of craft beers with mass-produced ones, it's easy to see why breweries like Broadhead are having a hard time making their way into the market. For example, 24 of these Labatt Blue will cost you about the same as two of these Broadhead Growlers. But White thinks a changing of the guard is coming in the beer industry one that will leave mass-produced beers at the bottom of the keg. I think they served a purpose in the past. Um, even myself growing up, I drank those kind of beers. I think people are starting to get tired of it. Um, and I think the, uh, the microbrew scene is growing because of that. People are liking to see handcrafted local uh, ingredients in their beers, and it just gives them a broader spectrum to, uh, to drink and to enjoy. Handcrafted is the operative word for White and LaRock as they built almost everything in their brewery with their bare hands. We literally made it from the ground up. Some of the equipment, uh, is every last nut and bolt in it, uh, we put together. I think the DIY approach is ingrained in a lot of us. And me growing up with my farming background, uh, it was just the way that we grew up. Um, you know, you don't go and buy a new part. You grab the old part and you fix it. Um, and I think a lot of that uh, just got carried over in our in our approach to the brewery. And bar owners like Yuremko have seen the do-it-yourself approach strike a core with beer drinkers in recent years. They're making stuff they like to make and hoping that other people will buy it as opposed to making whatever the majority will buy. Um, but I tell you, beer sales in Canada are flat for the last five years, eight years, and the only segment of the market that's growing is craft breweries. Despite their success off the hop, it all flows back to one thing for LaRock and White. This is the thing, it's, uh, I like my old job. I was good at my old job. Uh, it was a very interesting job, every day was different. Um, but uh, there's something to be said for making beer with all your buddies and uh, creating a business out of it. It's, uh, it's hard to compare to, put it that way. For the 25th Hour, I'm Sean Woodley.